Today I'm going to show you how you can install an auxiliary input jack on your car stereo to play music on your phone. Now to get access to the radio we need to remove quite a lot of trim pieces including the two side panels here but before that you need to remove the glove box and the lower finish panel under the steering wheel as well as the shifter plate down here and the clock. Next up we're going to remove the glove box. I'm just going to remove the screw along the side panel here and then remove this center console piece and there are two electrical connectors here to remove next up we're going to remove these side panels and prep. I'm just going to use my brother's toothbrush here and remove the clock out of the way then we're going to remove this final screw beneath the clock next up we're going to remove a couple of screws underneath the radio itself and now with everything out of the way, I should be able to pull this radio out of the dashboard. Now at the back of the radio, there's quite a lot of wires we need to disconnect. So I'm just going to use my brother's toothbrush here to disconnect some of these connectors. Alright, finally with all the wiring connectors free, I can remove the radio from the vehicle. So here we have the radio removed from the vehicle. Now I need to start to separate this radio and HVAC unit from the frame itself. So I'm going to start removing all of the screws that I can see around the perimeter. I'm just going to lay down my wife's kitchen towel here so I don't scratch the face of the radio. Two more screws on the bottom here. And separate those out. And then I can lift out this GPS unit over here. And I'll just disconnect this ribbon connector over here. Next up we're going to remove these four screws on either side to get this big bracket off. So here we have the guts of the head unit. We've got the 6 CD changer at the top and the cassette and radio near the bottom. So I'm going to need to separate these two by removing all of the Phillips screws around the case. I'm just going to pull off this front panel here. And I just pull off the top of the CD player here and just remove the bottom of the radio here and then the side piece. Next I'm going to unscrew the cassette drive and then I'll remove that cassette drive. It's got this connector on the bottom here that connected at the bottom here. So in order to separate the CD player from the cassette player there's a little twisting tab here that you have to twist it back to line it up straight and then you should be able to pry this board off. Now if you flip the motherboard over here, you can see that the three different connections here for the CD has left, right and ground, as well as the cassette, left, right and ground, and the radio has left, right and ground. So in essence we can actually hook up our auxiliary input to any of these three inputs here as long as they are analog inputs. The auxiliary input will then override that analog signal before sending it out here to go to the amplifier. Now I've actually never tried any of these inputs so I'm not sure which one is going to work so I'm going to be trying all three. I'm going to connect some hookup wire here to all three left, right and the common ground and then route them out the back of the stereo here, put everything back together and get it back in the car and see which one gives me the best signal clarity and connectivity. So here we are the CD header and if you look closely there's left out and right out. Those are the two left and right that we're going to solder and we're also going to solder to a ground connection elsewhere on the board because it's common between the cassette as well as the radio. So here the cassette connection we can see these two points here are your left out and right out and over here on the radio there's left out and right out that we're going to solder to. Then I'm just bringing the wire here and solder it on. And I'll just put down a little bit of tape on that connection so it doesn't pull. Now for my ground connection I'm just going to choose any common point that's grounded along the chassis of this radio. So in this case I'm just going to choose this point right here and solder that connection. So here I have my prototype wired up with the cassette, CD and radio inputs as well as the ground and I've got them all labeled out here so that these wires are going to route out of the case when I assemble this and I can test it outside when it's connected to the vehicle. So now it's time to reassemble this back in the reverse order that I took everything apart. And then I'll just reinstall this board and reinstall the cassette player and then install a gazillion screws and then we'll screw down the side piece here and then we'll install this front panel piece here and then the top of the CD drive and then I'm going to reinstall the top part here with the case routed together I've got the wires coming out the back here and now I'm just going to reinstall this installation bracket now I'm going to reconnect the ribbon cable and I'm going to reinstall the GPS unit and then I'm going to reinstall the radio and stereo unit into the case here I finally got everything back together with my custom wiring harness sticking out the back here. Then we're going to try these leads to see which aux input works. Now the next piece of this equation is a 3.5 millimeter jack with these ends stripped off here. We've got the left, right and ground which I've traced over here for this one being the left, the right and the ground that I'm going to make my connections to my custom wiring harness that I'm trying out on the radio here according to the input that I'm using. Now since the ground wire is actually common between all of them, I'm going to go ahead and connect these two together. So here we are at the back of the radio. I'm just going to plug in all of the main connectors at the back here so I can power everything on. And I'll just set this back into the dashboard so we can have a better look. 
So now we're going to test out my prototype. I've got these two lines here that are left and right from the CD player that I'm going to connect to my 3.5 millimeter jack over here and I'll plug this end into my phone. So now over at my CD player I'm going to insert a CD. Typically you would want a silent CD track but you can also use a CD that has tracks on it. It will be overridden. And once that starts to play I'm going to power off the system and insert my 3.5 millimeter jack into my phone. Press play. Make sure the music is set all the way to the maximum volume and then press power and then you're going to hear that the sound is going to come through the speakers from the phone. So next up I've got my radio lines connected to the 3.5 millimeter jack and I'll connect that to my phone. So now for the radio I'm going to plug in a 3.5 millimeter jack into the phone and then press play. Make sure that the volume goes all the way up and then I'm going to turn on the radio. Make sure it's in FM or AM and you'll hear that the sound now plays to the speaker. And if I pull out the plug while it's playing, it just switches back to radio mode. Alright, so next up I've got the cassette lines connected to my 3.5mm jack and we'll try that out. Now for the cassette mode, we're going to need a blank cassette to trick this into thinking it's in cassette mode. So I'll just insert that and then press the power button to turn it on. And now when I play my music, it actually doesn't play through the car speakers, but when I disconnect it and connect it, I can hear a static coming through the car's audio system, so I know that it is connected in some form or another. I think it's just a jack detection on this particular phone that's causing it not to connect due to the impedance. Now of course the last step would be to clean up all my wiring and reinstall the radio into the dash. Now I find that the CD is probably the best to connect to because it gives you a clear sound input, especially with a blank silent CD. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.